and welcome to this section of the microstrip patch antenna array creation. And in a previous section, we discussed how to create a pro-fed microstrip antenna using the HFSS antenna toolkit. And this model geometry and the analysis set up the excitation and the results such as return loss and radiation pattern, the gain, they were all automatically created and ready for you to simulate. In this video, we're going to design an 8x8 microstrip patch antenna array using that same model. So let's get started. Go ahead, launch the ANSYS electronic desktop and open up the single probe fed microstrip antenna that was created. Or go ahead and create a new one from the toolkit. Create a new HFSS model for the array. One way of doing this is just to go to the project manager window, select that single element model, copy and paste it into the project name and you'll automatically generate another instance of that model in your project folder and rename that model to array and you could call it FADDM4 finite array domain decomposition. Now highlight the model name and right mouse click again select the solution type and uncheck the auto open and you'll see a large red radiating box in the modeler window and that is an automatically created air box. This is our unit cell for the array. As in the array factor equation, the finite array wizard assumes that each element of the array is physically the same with the same field pattern. And the array is uniformly excited in magnitude, although in HFSS you can add a phase shift to the element. And that unit cell needs to have a coupled boundary condition to define the array. And since our unit cell is rectangular, we can select the coupled faces and use the lattice pair definition or the auto identify option. And if the unit cell is not rectangular, define the coupled surfaces or boundaries by explicitly defining the primary and secondary surfaces. And the coupled boundary that forces a periodicity in the field that corresponds to the periodicity of the array and it does this by mapping the fields from the primary boundary to the secondary boundary. And these fields are identical to each other, with the exception of a potential phase shift. And this phase shift is what is used to enforce the progressive phase delay across the entire array. And that steers the beam. And a coupled boundary uses the UV coordinate system to determine the field mapping and the coupled pairs are defined on opposite surfaces of the unit cell and the secondary UV coordinate system should be a simple linear translation of that primary UV coordinate system. And if done correctly, the distance between each of the boundaries of the UV coordinate system also corresponds to the distance and the direction of that next adjacent element in the array. And creating the UV coordinate system by selecting two points. And that first point corresponds to the coordinate system's origin. And the second point defines that UV, the U axis direction and the phase delay between the coupled boundary pairs. And in the phase delay tab, you can also define the phase delay in terms of an array scan angle and determine the appropriate phase delay to steer the beam. So let's go back to our model. And so we have a rectangular model. We'll make it easy 
and we'll use that auto identify lattice pair to create the coupled surfaces. Select the object air box and select assign boundary, coupled, auto assign boundary. The dialog box appears and select the XY plane and that's perpendicular to the lattice pair and select OK. And now you see both the primary and the secondary pair appears along the Y and the X axis. So let's go ahead and use a phase delay between the elements by defining a scan angle. Double mouse click on the lattice pair one and that will open up the lattice pair dialog box and create a variable name phi underscore scan for the phi delay and theta underscore scan for the theta delay. And when you add a variable, the add variable dialog box appears. So go ahead and use zero as the default value Note the scan angle is automatically repeated for the lattice pair too. And we need to create an open region. And select the top and the bottom surface of that air region, right mouse click, and assign a radiation boundary. No, depending on your design, you may also want to use a perfectly matched layer, a PML. Now let's create the array, select the HFSS, model, create array, and when the irregular array properties dialog box appears, in the general tab you have the option to specify the name of the array. Check the array as visible, and a sector which is the Y direction, and the boundary is the lattice pair 1, and select 8 for the size. For the B vector, which is in the X direction, the boundary is the lattice pair 2, and select the size as 8. Keep the padding cells to 1. And in the active cell tab, you can call out all the elements as active, or select off elements. But we'll just keep it simple and just select all active. Select apply and close. And now you'll see a large 8x8 array. Go ahead and set up your 2D and 3D radiation spheres. And for the array, the analysis setup is the same as for the single element. Only the geometry has been changed. Go ahead and analyze. And when the simulation is completed, go ahead and use the post-processing to set the magnitude and the phase for each of the elements. Select HFSS, Toolkit, Finite Array, Beam Angle, and let's keep the defaults for now, zero for Boresight, and check, calculate, and apply, edit sources, and you're done. And we could always verify whether the toolkit put in the correct value by right mouse click on Excitation, select Edit Sources, and see what the values are set. And go ahead and view the results. And the array radiation pattern depends on many factors, such as the number of elements, the distance between the elements, the excitation amplitude of each element, the phase of each element. So go ahead and change these parameters and verify the change in the radiation pattern. And you can plot these uh, radiation patterns for different values to visualize the beam steering. Go ahead and compare the radiation pattern of the array to that of a single element. And you clearly see that the gain has increased significantly. And don't forget to use the compute antenna parameter feature. And you get that by right mouse clicking on one of the far field setups. And in HFSS, you can always plot the radiation pattern on the geometry to visualize the fields. And that is the advantage of using an electromagnetic simulation tool. And not to mention the necessity of considering the finiteness of the array, but both the near and the far fields. 
And in this video, we created the antenna array using a probe-fed microstrip antenna element that was already created in a previous model, and we used the antenna toolkit. We used the finite array wizard and created the 8x8 array. We created the couple lattice pair using the auto identify option. Thank you for watching and listening. And for additional ANSYS learning videos, visit our website at www.ansys.com forward slash courses today.